Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. I'm not saying anything today on Monday, so nothing uh, red foldered in, in that. Tuesday, we have a couple of red folders with the U.S., uh, some CPI reports. Last uh, month, the CPI report, uh, this one gave us a little bit of a, uh, some heat when we took the trade. We had some trades open during this report, so take a note of that one. That's at 8.30 tomorrow. Uh, we have another one at 10 o'clock with New Zealand. And Wednesday looks like there's lots of red on the screen on Wednesday. So be careful with any trades on Wednesday. If you have some automatic uh, trading, you know, search that is automatic. If you have some of our artificial intelligence trading like Gearbox or uh, Variable or Neo, uh, you may want to uh, may put those on a pause uh, notion during some of these times here just so that you don't get whipsawed uh, real badly. There's a crude oil inventory report at 1030. That's on Wednesday morning. So just you know, keep all these lots of red folders on Wednesday. So be careful. Keep that in mind. And then the rest of the week, uh, we're good until, well, Thursday's pretty good. There's like a lot of red stuff this week. Fed Chairman Powell speaks, CPI reports, uh, Bank of Japan's uh, and some reports out. So just keep this, uh, this report section in mind as you go through the week to check and note some of these times where you you don't want to be trading some of these key pairs uh, during these periods of time, or at least be aware that they're coming so that you can plan on that volatility during that time. And so we're going to look and see what's hot and what's not. And right now we're looking like the New Zealand dollar. Actually, this is the this is our retracement screen. I looked to view this as the upper right hand one. This is a five minute chart. I'm looking. This is mostly with retracements. I'm pr primarily interested in these bottom two. This is 30 minute and the 15 minute. And we see the U.S. dollar is strong. The Canadian and the Swiss are weak. British pound so So we're looking at U.S., British, either one of those against the CAD or the Swiss. Uh, a little bit of uh, strength on the J Japanese on the higher time frame. That looks like that's changing. You see it's all the way up here at the top of number six on the 30-minute. It's coming out of the bottom of number three right now or number two. So you may want to consider may want to pass on the Japanese yen until they figure out which direction that's going to go. So right now I'm going to concentrate on the U.S. dollar and the CAD and probably the U.S. Swiss. So let's go to those charts. Pound CAD looks pretty ugly right now, too. Which one? Pound CAD, so just stay Pound away CAD. from it. Okay. So we got. So right now what I did was I first, being the Monday morning, I want to see what happened uh, last week, what happened uh, especially Friday is, is a good uh, good choice too because you want to just make sure see if you're what trend you're in. So I went all the way to a one hour chart to find out get a couple of days worth of activity. And I can see that we're basically in an uptrend uh, with a nice little pullback right in here. So right now it looks like this pullback is pretty much we had a nice move up, had a pullback. And if you actually take a look at the Fibonacci of this big move here where these the the first two trend lines are. Now I drew these trend lines based on the, uh, just to see what the overall direction was. And I saw there was a high, a higher high, here's a low, a higher low. This is all very, this is high time frame. So if you look to draw between these two, this channel, between this channel, the high and the low, you're looking at 294 uh, pips of uh, movement in between there. That's a big move. So you don't really need all that for what we do, but we do want to keep an eye on what our directional channel uh, trend is. So as I, uh, let's see if I can grab this. Um, let me scrub this out a little bit, see if I can grab this Fibonacci tool here. And so if you look and see what this range is right in here, uh, you can see where the, for the pullback, you can see this thing pull back, nice big move up and pull back right to the 50%. So I would say this pullback is probably pretty much done. We're looking at going on the, to the upside. So we're going to be focusing on 
the strength of the dollar uh, against the CAD. And so right now the CAD's weak. The dollar is the first currency of this pair. And so we're gonna be looking at going long with it, but we're gonna be looking for pullbacks. But I'm gonna take it from, so we see where this was a pullback reference to this little spot right in here. So I'm gonna be drawing my fib tool pretty much uh, let's see, well, we could take it from this point right here. You can see where it came right into the 20, the 25 percent range. Let me go and move this down here a little bit. We'll take it from that one because now we've already had the pullback. We've already had the retest of this area. So I'm going to be using this as my lower 25 percent of this. We know that we've already come back down. It's bounced off of that. Now, what we don't know is if this thing is going to come back and bounce again. But right now, we're looking with the have the strength of the dollar. So we're looking to try and catch our seven pips to the upside. And we have a range of 21 pips in between here. So that's a good uh, little range. But just keep in mind that we are right now in the middle of this pullback here. Here's an anchor. Here's a hit. Here's the, uh, here's the range. It pulled back all the way back. And now right now it's still back into the, here's the upper 25. Here's the lower 25. And we're right in the middle between, this is what our target zones are. As we draw our targets, these are going to be our orange lines. I'm assuming that hoping they're still orange. Yep, they are. These are our metal three orange lines for with our higher time frame that we use for, for our, our targets. You can see it's already passed and, and uh, hit the first target. Here's the target one. Passed that. Now it's coming up and retesting this target two. Then we're looking at possibly this one up here. And you can see with, with this down move, you can see we had a drop. We had a base a drop, and now we're basically looking for it to retest this little area, which is right where our third orange line is. So let's go to the lower time frame and see what we have for, and you can see that we had the first target was completed. Second target, we have a five minute break above that one. We're having a, we're in a pullback right now. So I'm looking at this area right now as a pullback. So looking for it to come up to the, hit our third target, but I'm gonna be using Actually, let me go and redo the redo all my fibs here since we're done with the first one. Oh, objects, here we go. And keep in mind it is Monday morning, so my brain's still trying to regroup here from the weekend. And so here's our Fibonacci's from this. So we're in an upper, right now we're looking to go long on this pair, but we're waiting for the pullback. So here's the last push up, pulled back. It tests, it's, test, it's basing right now into this area. And I'm gonna go, so that's on our 15 minute chart. And uh, you can see right now, the lower 25 is right where this first target was. So we'll see how far, if it's still coming back into this 30, 50 area, which is what we use for our, for our gauge. And shape. And I'd like to see a pullback at least to the 20. It's already past the 20. So right now I'm really concentrating on this 30 uh, to 50, 60% re retracement area. It doesn't matter what time frame you are on this right now because we do it from this last little push. And we're going to go to our five minute. We do have some five minute candle closes above this. We're getting the pullback right now. And we're going to wait and see what happens here as the... Uh, now the dollar is in a pullback. If you look at the our heat map on this, you'll see that the dollar is in a pullback right here. It's still strong up here. It's still strong, it's still strong. So this is basically just a retracement pullback of the Canadian. And you see they kind of flipped right here. Now, as long as they flip like that, I'm not gonna to be too anxious to get in until I start seeing it starting to flip again, where the dollar becomes strong above the Canadian. That's sort of a good sign that the, uh, the retracement is over and they can start looking for a possible entry. So so with that, I'm gonna go back to the chart. I'm gonna go to my one minute chart and see how see what the price action looks like on this. See, it came back down, tagged to 38%. All of our moving averages are not in the right order, right? Because right now the green is below the yellow, which is all below the 62. And so right now the moving averages are in the wrong direction. I would like to see them start flipping back over to the upside, looking to maybe again, maybe get another close on this orange uh, trend line. Here we have a little trend coming, developing. 
And we keep in mind, on Monday mornings, this is where the institutions are starting to, they're trying to get set up for their positions for the week. They're not in and out of trades like we are, but they get their positions set up early, like Monday. And for Monday, they usually uh, gain their positions. Friday, Thursday, Friday, they're taking profits. And so don't be in a hurry to get into this trade. I would like to see this thing, all these moving averages flip to the other direction uh, before I take this trade. Again, you want the wind to your back. We have to bounce off the 38. That's a good thing. Now, if we can get start getting the close above and retesting this trend line, then we have lots of room to the upside. And the upside being this upper, this is be our upper target. And you can see that with that, you would have, there's your 20 pip, uh, or the 20 pip range. All we're trying to do is get seven pips out of it, maybe 15. And, uh, but we're just going to be patient with this one. We're going to let this one develop. Any questions so far? And let's see, the other one was the U.S. Swiss. We'll take a peek at that one while we're waiting for this one to develop. If anybody sees this developing uh, after when I'm on the other chart, let me know. Uh, let's see, has a U.S. CAD. We're going to go with the U.S. Swiss. It's kind of the same picture as a CAD. The same picture, okay. Uh, not totally, but you, you're kind of in the top part waiting for a pullback. Again, we're in an uptrend. We here's a higher a high. Here's a higher high. Here's a low, higher low, higher low. Now it did come back and retest this little pivot. Off of this strong move, it made a little pivot, made a higher pivot, so that's void. Came back down, made another pivot. So here's our trend line right in this area. This one still counts. Whoops. You're, and you're coming in on a what it's being bouncing off of is the ninety one sixty five, which is a blue fifteen minute fib number. Bouncing off of it to the bouncing off with it below it. It can't pass it yet. Yeah, that's why it's capping off there at the top 91, there. Ninety one six ninety one sixty five. Ninety one sixty five. That's way above here. You're on the uh, U.S. Swiss, right? <laughs> yes, ninety one. It's no, where it's been bouncing off. Oh, oh, you're on the yeah, bouncing, oh, you're no, on the four so, hour chart. That's why it didn't look so bad. I'm looking at a fifteen minute fib. I was thinking that was bouncing off now as opposed to bouncing where it bounced already, already did bounce off. So let's just mark that. I'll make this one. Uh, well, actually, let's get our pips in here first. Here's our move up. This was all the way back on the 14th. That was, uh, what day was the 14th? 14th was, that was of June. That was, uh, that's three weeks back ago. here. Yeah. So we do have, we, we did have our trend line. I so said this was a move up, pull back, move up. We have a little trend line going on here with this one. There we go. This trend, now this trend line got broken. It got broken this morning or over the overnight last night. Uh, so that pivot was in, but I'm still looking for this to come up and retest. Now it may not, we may not get a break above these pivots up here, but we're gonna at least mark them anyway. And so I'm going to be looking at the overall range being from, let's see what the range we want to use here. This is, that's 143 pips. So that's, this is a good, plenty of range to be looking at. We have a nice little basin here. I'm going to be using this trend line right here from the origin of this move to where this thing seems to be bouncing off of uh, that moving average. Here's our downward trend. So we're going to be taking our trend and see, we've seen where our targets are going to be to the upside. So I'm going to take this and move it down. And our orange targets are going to be Oh, there we go. Here's our first target. There's our Actually, this is going to be our first target right here. This one right here, the 60, this uh, 38. That'll be our, once that breaks, we're going to be looking at the 50. And after that breaks, we're going to be looking at the 60. And the range in between these two should be, we have 18 pips. That's a nice, uh, nice size range. I like having them. I like 15, seven's okay. I don't like having much less than seven because that means my Fibonacci's are a little bit too narrow for the higher time frame. So we have that one.
that one. And this, these are these are our high, these are the targets we're looking to the upside after the pull after this pullback. Now we're looking for this thing to uh, the dollar is still strong to the Swiss, so we're still looking to be trading in favor of the dollar. And we're going to go move this Fibonacci, and then we're going to redraw it on a lower time frame in the opposite direction. Oops, I didn't do my sh my shaded areas here. I get my 25% zones in. And here's that zone. There's that zone. And these are our targets. Go to my lower time frame and check my five minute out and see where that is. We're still in the my lower 25%. You can see that. So again, I don't want to be in a big hurry. I want to see it clear that area, and then come back and retest. We do have a little bit of a trend going up this way. But right now, I'm still looking at this as being our first target. That's 21 pips away. And let's see US Swiss. Let me see what that looks like on another chart here. So we have some zones that we need to be paying attention to. And it looks like the first area that we're really going to be looking at is yeah, ninety-one sixty-five was the one uh, one zone, and then the ninety-two twenty-seven above that. So ninety-one sixty-five. And that's that blue fib line number that I was telling you about. Yeah, and that's going to be a little bit lower than where that's actually that's going to be pretty much right where it's been. Ninety-one sixty-five. That's pretty yeah. much right out of the top of where this uh, this line right here, the uh, the twenty-five percent zone is. And that's let's go to a one minute chart and see if we have anything there. Remember this one again, we want to be trying, we're looking to take it long with the strength of the dollar. And it looks like it's starting to try and break through here a little bit right here. So we can get a little, I'd like to see it pop out of this little, this lower zone and then come back and retest. So I'm going to be looking at a. I'm going to be looking at something coming up at somewhere there. We don't know where the high is going to be and looking for a pullback zone. And that's going to be somewhere right around in, I'll just use, actually pretty much right where it is right now. I'm going to see it break this little shaded area that I'm drawing right now. I can see it come out of that area and then come back in and retest it. And let's go take a look at, uh, see what our US CAD's doing. I'm still in the pullback phase of this whole thing. It's in the lower 25, and I'm going to see, so wait to see it come a bounce. Now, with the move, these moving averages doing what they're doing, this thing may start switching around here a little bit. The CAD has gotten stronger on the lower time frame. So this actually, uh, we could be getting a bounce. It could be, right now, the moving averages are not in the right direction to go uh, go long. They are in the direction to go south, but it's bouncing off this 200 moving average. So right now, it's consolidating. The, it's, it's inside of its own little wedge, and it's just getting lower highs and higher lows. So... I'm not going to be in a big hurry to take that until we can figure out which direction this thing's going to go. And right now, it looks like it has a little bit more pressure to the downside, but you only have nine pips to the uh, to the bounce off this 200 moving average. Not enough room, and not enough room if it bounces off of this. Uh, you barely have enough room to get your 10 pips, uh, get seven pips out of it, but you can be running right into this 
62 moving average, which is seven pips away. So you get done with your spread and everything else. You, all you're doing is uh, taking taking a, a necessary risk for a very low profit. So again, no trade on this. And the U.S. Swiss is maybe doing pretty much the same type of thing. Let's see if that's breaking out at all. Um, I'll go to my 15-minute chart and see where my move. My moving averages on this one now are in the correct direction. The U.S. is strong. I like this one a lot better. Uh, it's it already broke through the 200 moving average. All of our moving averages in the right direction. Right now, I'm looking for the pullback. Yeah, I'm already in it, of course. Already in this one. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I was. I'm also in the U.S. CAD at this point. All right. Now we still have a nice little target zone right here. We have this is our first target out of, out of the shaded zone. Here's our first target. If I get a little bit of, I'm still like can see a little bit of a pullback because we still have this little wick right over here that we have to pay attention to. And you see that's right at the 95.74 area. And um, if we do get a close above these bodies of these candles right now, then that would be is looking like it's trying to break out. But right now we do have that little bit of a problem right there. It's not bad to see if you, if you can't talk yourself out of a trade, then that's a good one to take. If there's always a reason not to take it, you may want to reconsider not taking it. Uh, see, so I do. Uh, see this this could be a trap in here, but we still want to, I still like to see wherever this thing comes up. I want to see it come back and retest one of my, at least a twenty three percent pullback before we go up to this area. There is lots of room to that top side. There's 13, 14 pips. The target range is, is good. The strength is good with the US dollar being strong. I uh, just want to see where it can give us a retracement. If I go to my one minute chart on this, you'll see it's actually starting to retrace a little bit right in here. So this may have found its uh, way out of we did get the close, although it's, I would like to see a five-minute close, not a one-minute close, but let's see where we have. We do not have a five-minute close. We do have the one-minute close out of the zone. It did have a little bit of a pullback. So right now, here's where the high of this range is, of this one is. That's where the high is. I'm waiting for a 23. At least I want to see at least hit the 23 mark. And once it hits the 23, I'm looking for the reversal pattern. And so there's the high. So we have to move this thing down some. Here's my 23%. So I want to see it come down at least 23%. I'll at least tag that, preferably close inside of there. But here's the range that we're looking at, 23 to 50. Now, Brian's already in it. Now, he's, uh, I'm not sure, where did you get in, Brian? Let um, me see here. And right now, this is only this is less than a two pip pullback right now. So there is a little bit of strength to that. Uh, the dollar is still strong. Swiss is still weak. Yeah, you can probably. You can I probably, got in at um, ninety one sixty three when it broke. When it broke ninety one sixty three, that would be right about. A little risky because it sixty five was right above it. Yeah. Like I said we did have a little that little wick right on the other side here, but this thing has a strength too. It should be able to break through that. I'm okay with taking this. Uh, I don't like breakout trades, and that's pretty much what I'm looking. We did have a little mm -hmm. bit of a pullback. So I'm going to uh, put my entry right about just a little bit above where that red line is. Because if I put it right on that red line, it's going to take. It's going to put me in right away. So let's see here. U.S. CAD's working out so far for me, too. I'm going to see how this candle closes. If this candle closes bullish, I'll just jump into this thing with a buy. There is no um, supply on the U.S. Swiss for a bit. Fibonacci at 9180, 80, 82, somewhere in there. I'm going to ride this up a bit. Yeah, so all these moving averages in the right direction right now, we have like a one pip pullback. So when this candle closes, which is just just closed, I'm just going. I'm going to go on in this one.
And if we go to our, see where that wick was that we were looking at earlier. So that wick is still, we still have uh, three, almost four pips to get through that wick area. Once it gets through that wick, we should be well on our way. By that time, mm -hmm. we did get a little bit of an earlier entry on it. All of our moving averages are good. Uh, we can use our 15 pip stop. You'll see that we're not going to even, you shouldn't even, you probably won't come close to needing all of that. So here's our 15 pip stop, seven pip target. There's a target. And you see the target is right at the wick. So if it, if this wick still holds, it could still pop up, give us a little head fake, get us out of a trade and still look for another retracement coming in. Uh, but we are in this trade right now. The stop is probably all the way down. Stop is right, right here is the stop. It's right in this zone, right below where this this move started. So this, if the base of this red candle, now we're on a 15 minute, if this 15 minute candle gets a close below it, then we're probably in the wrong direction and we may want to get out of this trade. We, uh, so the stop is well out of our way. We are in an uptrend. All of our moving averages are correct. And you see my stop is below this yellow trend line, moving average line, which you can see has not been violated ever since the, that they crossed. So even if it comes back and tests that, we should still be out of harm's way. And if it comes back and tests that, we may want to take another, uh, maybe another position to dollar cost average at, on this upward, upward trend. But right now, as long as we can keep our stop below this 13 period moving average, we could maybe ride this, should be able to ride this thing up to maybe this orange show. Uh, target zone. I said that's our first target. Questions? Good over here. Any questions from our attendees? Just waiting for profits to take. Yeah. But everything looks good right now. The dollar is strong. The Swiss is weak. We have, we're in the trade. All of our moving averages are in the direct, correct direction. And like I said, you can just start trending. If this thing has a nice strong trend down, uh, you can probably use this 13-period uh, moving average before we get the break. If you look over here to the left and see what it did on this way down, you can see where, let's see, on the, it's on a one-hour chart. Let's see if I can scrunch this up here. One, one trade down. You got out? You're out already? One of my U.S. CADs. Yep. <clears throat> You got nine pips on the U.S. CAD. Oh, so, one of my positions. You can see how this thing just fell off the cliff here. <clears> this, <throat> like last uh, on the seventh, July seventh, that was last Wednesday. This thing just fell off the cliff, went through all this, and now it's just coming back up. To, it's going to come up and retest this zone. So this could be a nice little move through. You may have, it may take you all week to get back up to this range, uh, but that was a nice. And that's basically where it's coming back. But it's going to find some little areas right in here. Like here's a little wick over wick area right in here. So this is going to be a good target. This is probably going to be a good dull target right here. So by that time, we'll be out and maybe get, we'll start looking, maybe we can play this thing for a couple of different pullbacks, take a profit, get out, have a pullback, get in again mm -hmm. until it works its way through these three, no, these three target zones. Right now we're in this one and we are just waiting to see what, how it develops. Uh, let's see if I can spin this up. And right now, we're still looking at... Now, the euro just got weak. The dollar is still strong pretty much across the board. So mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at... We're in the Swiss. Then we can look at the U.S., uh, Euro-U.S. I'll take a look at that one as we're waiting for this one to develop. And see, Euro, U.S. CAD. So here's the U.S. CAD. It did get the break. Here's our target. Let's take a look and see, because we're looking at going long on this one as well. It broke the trend line. It's coming back. So here's our pass and check. It came up, pass, coming back, checking the, the trend line. The CAD is still, CAD's actually picking up some strength here. Uh, we have a four-point spread on the 30-minute. We, we have a four-point on the 15 and the dollar has just gotten stronger. We're testing this little trend line. Here's a here's a trend line, pass close above, passing it, checking it. Here's our pullback. Uh, 
Moving averages have crossed. Now it's coming back into the trend. Let's see what, how this candle closes right in here. This is target one, this is target two. We still have a third target up way up above, I believe, yep. Again, now the fact this thing, this was a little bit of a head fake. It couldn't get through this area, couldn't get through this area. Now it's back into the, into the wedge. Here's a low, there's a higher low. So low, a high, higher low, lower high, broke this pivot, came back down, now it's back in the wedge. Now we're gonna, now it's actually starting, looks like it could be starting to trend here. We already have our zones marked, I believe, on the higher time frame. We're gonna take these off. Hmm. Yeah, I'm still not happy with this one yet. Now let's back into it. It's starting to get a little tighter and tighter. It still made a lower high from, from this little high here. It still made a lower high, but it did break this initial trend line. So right now it's got pretty much of a flat top. I'd like to see it get a little bit more strength to the upside before I take this. I'd like to see a breakthrough here and then we can have the target. This target up here is uh, far enough away. I believe that's 16 pips. That's a nice little range, but we're going to hold off on that. Let's see how our Swiss trade's doing. For your Swiss trade, you have a nice demand zone at 91.58. So if you haven't got in it, don't get it yet. <laughs> Even though I'm in it. I wouldn't do it until 91.58 ish. I typically don't take breakout trades, which is basically what that one was. It did break out. Come, now it is coming back in, retesting our little shaded areas. So here's our origin of the move. Came out. So here's where you start seeing it start. Here's the big extended range <coughs> candle. Green candle came back, pulled back. Another extended range candle. Pulled, now it's retesting this little area right in here. Our stop is still way down below. I still like it. And our pullback area. And it's pulling right back to 61% per, of this move right here. Remember, we're, we're trying to get the, the most precise entry as we can and just uh, loading up on the lot sizes to uh, take the profits. And just keep in mind, so one of our theories that we do, we're not looking to go and we're not looking at all these hundreds of pips uh, of trying to get, I mean, it's nice to get a 100 pip move, but we're, fo <laughs> but we're focused on getting very tight entries, very tight stops, so we can load up on the lot size. Now, if you can do that at the extended of a higher time frame period and get on with that same micro type of a trend, you have like no stop, you can put on a higher lot size, then just go for the, for the bigger move. But uh, whenever you get these 100 pip moves, you're not gonna be able to, more than likely, you're gonna have more than a 15 pip stop uh, pullback at this, ranging 100 pips, if you take some of these bigger pullback moves, it's going to take you out. And then it's a matter of whether or not you say, well, I've got 100 pips. Uh, it's out to 100 pips. I'm going to move my stop to uh, 40 pips or 100 pips below it. Uh, well, are you willing to give up those extra pips? If you have a really small lot size, uh, you can do that. But it's not how many pips you make, it's how many dollars you make. And there's different theories about each. Uh, I mean, there's there's a good argument on, in either direction on that. Can't make dollars unless you get pips. Can't make dollars unless you get pips. But man, I like the small pips and load up. And I can take a uh, seven pip move ten times in the, in the course of a hundred pip move. 
with a larger lot size. So it's just a matter of what your what your risk tolerance is and what your appetite for uh, patients. And so there's nothing wrong with either either method, just no matter what sits, fits your personality. What if you've been told you don't have a personality? Have you been told that, Brian? I, I, there's been a few times, yeah. Well, I have confirmed that I do have a heart, so. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> it's eating. At least for another few months anyway. Good. <laughs> this is a pretty significant pullback on this. And if you think where this thing was, it kind of popped out of the bottom of this zone, came back. I mean, it, it this thing just ranged overnight. It ranged uh, 36 pips on this range. I'm really glad we didn't go the pound CAD route. Is that one not playing there very nice? Oh, it's just, the pound has just dropped like a rock. Now, the Swiss is getting stronger to the dollar. This is a fairly strong pullback. Now, you have a choice. Either you can just go and let yourself get stopped out if it comes back and tests this. I like the fact that this thing's still pointing up. I don't like moving my stops, but if we were to be looking at this range, and we got in, now we'd, our, our stop would be all the way down here. If, I get, if it comes back and tests this, because right now this is a significant bounce point. My mm -hmm. stop is right at the bounce point. So I have two choices. One, I can just let myself get stopped out if it bounces off of that and then get back in if it bounces. Or I can move this thing down a little bit further if it gets into that, take another position, and then have an even tighter stop off of that position to dollar cost averages pullback with the idea that it's going to bounce, come back up, and retest this area. Uh, I'm going to vote for moving this. I don't usually move my stops, but that's what I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to move this thing down a little bit out of harm's way. I'm going to use this area as the new retracement. It still hasn't broken this, so I'm still good. But uh, the fact that this moving average is still pointing up, I could see where this thing may come back down and retest the 60, the 50, the 61 zone. I'm going to keep my stop out here. If it bounces off of that, I'll probably take another position Dollar cost took average. New, yeah, I just took another position. Uh, dollar cost average, and that way it only has to go up to, oh, well, probably maybe like around this level here, and you're profitable on both, on you know, overall, be profitable on the trade, and then you're out of the trade. Remember, I said I was a, bit, a little bit concerned about that little wick that was over here to the left, which is right where this thing was bouncing off of. And the 90, let's see, we're looking at a. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we got here. Ninety-one forty-four is a area of interest. You have a strong demand area at ninety-one forty-seven. All the way that zone goes from ninety-one forty-seven to ninety-one forty. Ninety-one forty-seven. Why don't you come up with that one? I got 91. That's the no, uh, that's the tool, the supply and demand tool. Oh, the supply and demand tool. Okay. The zone is 9147 and 9140. Uh, 9144 is a red fib line. On a five minute? Yeah. And so right now it's in between the 9165 and 9144. And we're right now in a demand zone. 9158 to 9154 it's sitting in that demand area. You see, here's a nice little rally. Came back, rally based, came back, retest, retested this little area once before, right in this area. I'm going to move this thing down here. If I can grab it. There we go. 
This is the area that was tested before off of this up move, strong up move. Here's extended range candle, came back up, pulled back, extended out, pulled back. So this little spot right here at the bottom of this box was tested twice. So it is finding some buyers around this area. My stop is down below a little bit further. I've got this moving average in the way. I've got this. Uh, this would be the demand area where it was once broken, came back, tested, broke again, tested, broke again. Now it's retesting for the third time. If this breaks, I'll be out of this trade. If this thing can hold and comes back up here to around the 38 and gives me a nice, nice candle, I'm going to take another position and dollar cost average my position on this. Let me one minute chart and take a peek at this. See what the price action looks like on it. Man, the pound just went crazy down. Here's my 38% retracement. Here's my 50. And if I get a wick, if it wicks down below the 50 and doesn't close below the 61, I'll be good. Right in here is where the buyers came back in to push it up. Buyers came back in, pushed it up. Now the buyers are either going to come in. If the buyers, if there aren't any more buyers in here, then I'm out of this trade. But I need to see a close below this pivot line here. It's still hanging in that demand zone. It doesn't want to react to it much, does it? No. I do think it's going to have trouble taking this pivot high out. <clears throat> so like I said, I think on this retracement, I think we would be looking at a reversal retracement back up into probably this area right in here. And we'll see what we get on this. If we get a five minute close below, I'll probably just bail on this one. You can see, you can see how like this thing came out of the 25% zone, but it didn't go very high. It's coming back in to retest some of this. Another good reason to be a little bit more patient. This was the break of the downward move. This was the break of the wedge, came back up, took out this pivot. We do have a little trend line going from here to here. This is pretty much, here's your wave one, wave two, pullback, wave three. This is a big move here with the wave three. This is a wave four pullback. And now looking for it to come back, take out this top, make a wave five and then retest and maybe perhaps have a reversal up around this area. Let's see, we're getting the bounce off of this moving average right here. This thing's flattened out a little bit. These are pointing down. Again, this is the pullback I say we're starting to get a little bit of, we could start getting a little bit of reversal. This is going to be the pivot that's going to, if when this thing goes back up, this is going to be the pivot that's going to have to break in order to get much lower. We'll see how much, how, where this pivot stops and then see where the pullback begins. This will be the upper 25% of this down move right in here.
I don't know how many of the those that are in attendance were doing the pound yen last Friday. If you'd have taken that trade where we analyzed you to one just a few minutes after that, and then now we're playing the short back down. Well, I am. It turned out pretty well. That was a fun analysis. Once we get a close above this little zone, I'll probably take another position at that point and then use my stop below this trend line. <clears throat> right now it's bouncing. Here's the anchor. Here's a hit. Here's the third hit on the trend line. Whatever happens here, if this trend line breaks, I'll close out this trade, maybe reverse positions going down to retest this level down here. This is where it bounced off that trend line. That's the, this higher time frame trend line right in there. Anchor, hit, third hit, inside of a zone. And this was a nice little pullback. Let's see what the range of that is. That's. And that's our 15 pips. So you can see, like right now, this probably would have taken out my stop only to possibly look at reversing positions. That's why I want to be able to take myself out. I don't want the, the brokers to take me out. Yeah, I just took myself out of one trade, the Kiwi US, one part of it. The Kiwi seems to be getting stronger across the board. It may still work out for the other half, but there's no reason to take a big loss. But if this move here is your wave three of this Elliott wave series, and this would be the wave four pullback, we should be able to break this and get up and still hit our target. I still like the Swiss a little bit lower, to be honest. I just don't know if it's going to turn. Looks like this little what third hit is starting to break down here. So it was tested here, it was tested here, and now it's starting to break. I said if it passes this trend line, closes, comes back up and retests it, that's our little pass and check, and then we're looking to get down we reverse positions to the other side. <clears throat> All of our moving average are in the direction to go short on this one right now. And remember, you got a nice quarters numbers coming right up, 9150. At 9144, we have a little bit of a zone, which is mm -hmm. right down here, pretty much where the, well, let me mark it here. 91.44, right about there. I'll make this one a different color here. This is actually a red fib line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it comes up and tests this trend line, it comes back down here, we've got 10 pips to the downside. That will eliminate some of our loss if we get stopped out here. And that long candle down on the 15-minute chart created a supply right at the 91.65. Just as we said, that blue line is key. Always seems to be that way. So if I get stopped out and it comes back and retests, I'm going to reverse positions and go short on this. Yeah. I... 
You don't like taking the first trade of the week on getting stopped out on it, but that happens. Yeah. Again, a lot of the reasons why I don't, I'm not in a big hurry to take a trade on a Monday morning. Good call, my friend. Good call. Well, was, but I took the trade. But this would be the next test. This trend line would be the next test. If all this trend line breaks... I so we still have this little moving average here. It's still kind of in the way. Let's see what it looks like on a that's on a five minute. We're starting to get the crossover of the green and the yellow. This is on the fifteen. We still have this one still in the way. There's a little bit of a conflict of different uh directions on different time frames and you kind of want them all going in the right direction on all the three time frames it looks like we can get stopped out on this Now, if this comes up and tags us, I'm going to close out this trade with a little bit less of a loss than what I was, than what I've got planned on this one. I'm still long, so I'm hoping to catch a little bit of break before you take it short. Too right far. now, all of our all of our moving averages have crossed the cross. Two of the three have crossed over the 200. This one's still pointing down. So right now I'm looking at this being a pullback. And I'm going to close this one out. You closed your long? Uh, I'm going to, well, I'm just about ready to close my long. Have this okay. nice little drop here, they'll pull back. And I still think this thing is going to come back down and retest. Let me see. The Swiss is now strong. Swiss is uh, now flipped to the strong side. So, yeah, I'm going to close this one out. And I'm going to reverse positions. I'm going to do a buy stop or sell stop right about to this area right here. If this thing comes down, sell stop. If, it, if this thing pulls back, if it comes down through, I'm going to be looking at this being a target right in here. That's the 91.44 area. And we said it was uh, 90, yeah, point nine one four four. I agree with your overall move down. We're looking at the one hour. You've got a basing over the last um, day or two in the one hour chart, and we're just now in that bottom part again. Yeah, I think it, uh, it may bounce back up, but it's a huge drop down. And now it's bouncing off one of your moving averages and the 91.65, so yeah, good call. Closing out myself. I'm not even going to wait for it. When have you heard me do that? Never. <laughs> it doesn't happen often. <clears throat> I'm going to close part of my position off. Let the rest of it see what happens with the rest of it. You know, if it works out great. but still I haven't taken a loss over 15, which is our key small losses. And we did have a drop. It's basing. It's, I'm going to expect it may come back up and retest this trend line. You check this moving average. Right now you've got this. It's following the 13 moving average all the way down. This one was tested mm -hmm. right here. Didn't cross. We're getting a little bit of a crossover pullback on the green to the yellow. If it comes up, test it, and then turns around, it seems going to be going down to the south side. It's got pressure to the to the short side right now. 
I agree. Here's our upper 25 right in this area right in here. So it broke the trend. Actually, right now, these are the targets. Here's the target one, target two, target three. So I'm going to, target three is right here, that 91.44 right here, the 61% of this down move, which is 61% of the retracement from the up move that it first made. So it's kind of, an, it's, right now, it's a little bit of no man's land right now. This is the middle zone right here. There's the 38. There's the 50. And here's the 61. Now, if this thing whipsaws me, then I would not be trading this thing anymore today. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I would say we're not going to win them all. We just try and win most of them. I say I'm still not in the second position. I did get out of my short or my long position. See how it came back down? And right now, it's sort of retesting this little area. So we have a little bit of a push, pullback. It may come up and retest, but right now, this trend line is holding. And if you look a little tighter, you'll see that there's a little bit of a secondary trend developing right in here. This area right here is our target to the downside once we get in. But from a higher time frame's perspective, we're still in that lower 25% on the higher time frame perspective through this whole move. And that's a, I mean, it's a, and it's a pretty substantial zone here. If you look and see where this shaded area is from top to bottom, that's a 33 pip zone. So right now it's trading inside a 33 pip range. Right now it's at a 50% pullback from, what time was this today? This was at uh, about 3.30, 4 o'clock this morning. So from about 3 o'clock this morning, pretty much at the time when uh, London opened up to the overnight high. And let's see if it's re gonna retest this lower part. Let me just redraw this whole thing from a different perspective. Well, that took a while. Yeah. So 
So here's our here's our range right now. Here's the low, here's the high. I'm gonna draw this. Here's our range up. Here's our twenty lower twenty five right down here. Things don't look right, you redraw and see if you can change the picture a little bit. You want to get a picture that you're looking for. Upper range, lower range, middle three. Right now it's in the middle third. Here's our 38. And the strength did change since we started this uh, trade. The strength did change. These are our three targets now to the downside. Here's our third target. It hit this one, closed out. Right now it's in the middle of this, right now, which is right at the 50% of this up move. And we're going to see what happens here. Now we have this 200 moving average. Again, this thing's kind of in the way from where our target is. We are getting the strength to the downside. But we could get stalled right here in the middle of this area here. Came up. Tested the area, pulled back, retesting the area again. It hasn't pulled out the bottom yet. I did get filled. Looks like I did get filled on this. Fifteen pip stop. Now my stop is all the way up here where we started this whole mess. I said, if it comes out, and if it comes out of this before it hits this orange line, I'll be out of this trade, and I'll no, we'll, we'll not trade this anymore today. I love how you say that. I will not. Sounds sounds very with a lot of authority, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. How you keep them losing position after position. Right now, I still think that I still feel comfortable. This thing's uh, going to come back down and retest this zone and maybe retest this area down here. The Swiss is now strong in all four time frames. So right now, we want this thing to be going short. If we look at the uh, how these things flip, see how this thing now, this is strong, this is strong, this is strong. The dollar is starting to weaken. This is, so right now the Swiss is strong on all four time frames. So uh, that's a good validation to reverse the position on this. A lot of momentum moves this morning. Pairs are all over. There, nobody's just staying. Well, and that's a Monday. That's what happens mm -hmm. on Mondays a lot. You would think that certain times of the day uh, or certain times of the week that it matters, but it does. It just flat does. That's why we do Monday night swings because Mondays really aren't great. Most of mine's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. But we have all week to uh, be right more often than wrong. This is just the beginning of the week, so we have all week to. Uh, I always look to see what my weekly performance is. I may have a, a down day, but if I can be profitable in the other four days, then usually that makes up for the difference, as long as I keep my my stop out so uh, small. So I'm still looking for this being a target. If it comes back down to this orange line, it may get me into my target. But if it just wicks down below, then I may just take the profit on that and then maybe wait for another pullback. So right now, here's our upper zone. Here's our middle zone. Here's our lower zone. I can take these fibs off and retrace this down move and look for pullbacks until it gets down to here. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take my objects, my fib line, delete it. And now I'm going to be reversing this position, looking at 
to fibs from the strong move down, a pullback, strong move down to see if it comes back in. Once it hits this shaded area, or once we get, if we can't get a close below here, I won't enter the re enter the trade until it gets into this zone and pulls back out again. Just like this one's now pulled out. This is just when you know you have to reverse your, your, your thought process. Pull it out of the zone. We don't, again, we don't know where the low is going to be, but it could probably get another little retracement back into our what our shade our 23 to 50% range. And this is where the whipsawing oftentimes comes into play. There's a little bit of an overlap area between the upper 25 on the higher time frame to this lower time frame. Right now, if this down move is uh, confirmed, we should be able to keep our stop pretty much just above this yellow moving average. Yeah, the yellow, the green is crossing over the 62. So we'll do a little bit of a basing right in here. But once, remember we talked about with these big candles, uh, This right now the fact it broke through this wick and got a close, this is the area right down here where we're looking at this thing possibly coming in, which is right at our orange line. And I say this thing has the potential of 91.23, which is all the way down into, here's our first blue target right in here, actually 91.44, I think is what we were saying was a target. Make that one a red line because that's a red five minute line. And actually, this 9165 was the blue line. So we have blue, that, so we have blue up here. These are the fib lines that we were talking about on our other charting system. That was 91.65. Let's see, we're just worked up above, couldn't hold it. And now the next target is going to be down here at the 44 area, which was 91.44. This one's a red one. And then we have another target at 91.23. And that's going to be a green one. These are, this is our zones that were now when you, when Brian was talking about how he would draw the zones, he would be just drawing the Fibonacci's in between this zone and this zone, then this one and then this one. Mm -hmm. but right now it's right in between and it's coming right into the lower part of once it comes down and retests this red zone. If it tags this red zone, I will be out of this trade. 
And then I'll wait and see if it can break through. If it breaks through this, then we're looking at even going lower yet to possibly this one. But a lot of times it goes from blue zone to blue zone. Right now we're coming into the upper part, upper third. So this thing has some potential room to the downside. Questions? Not here. Eva's awfully quiet today. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't hurt to be patient waiting for the pullback to be completed before you jump into a trade, especially like a breakout trade. <clears throat> I said, I don't have much a lot of luck. I don't have a lot of luck with breakout trades. I'm better off and just waiting for it to pull back. Maybe you know, it pulls back and then maybe it pulls back a little bit harder. Uh, but it's, um, from my standpoint, it seems to be a little bit safer. I should just go on for a very, very small target. Let's see where is our zero line yeah we're right at our zero line right now this is pretty much right where we entered into this trade we're pretty much back to break even here pretty well getting close to break even on this let's see how somewhat respecting this 200 moving average right now I actually just had a uh, German 30 trade that I got in and out of. Well, you should have called it out. No, we're looking at well, this. you were busy analyzing one of the others, so I, I didn't want to just kind of drag you off and, oh, well, come and look at this thing. But it's still, there's still potential there because it's just coming out of its pullback. Trying to grab the Fibonacci line. I'm still looking at this pullback. I'm going to shorten this thing up a little bit. Right now, this is a nice little drop. It's basing right in here. And if it drop, do a drop of base and then another drop, I'll put it right down here into this, all the way down here to this 90 to 100% range. So the question we have here is we have the, uh, we had a pivot low, came back up. Right now it's retracing pretty much right into this higher time frame zone right here in the middle. This one has a strong move down. Is it gonna, now the question is it going to be, is it going to respect the 50%, 60% area of this down move and go lower? Or is it gonna respect the, this move up to the pullback to go higher? And the bomb is we don't know. And this is where you can oftentimes get into pro troubles because you're saying, okay, this is the higher time frame pullback. The pullback is going to go up and retest this, which it may do. But this one's also saying, well, we're going to push it down, maybe retest the bottom of this to go before it goes up higher. So it's kind of a no man's land. And this is where you can, this is where you get whipsaw. This is where you get, you take trades and you think, okay, this, here's my target. Here's a pullback. 
Now, if it pulls back, it may test this, it may break down a little bit lower, but all in all, it's just ratcheting its way and getting a lot of different, uh, causes a lot of different questions as far as which where, where the target is. Because you have a consolidation, you have a high, lower high, you have lows, higher lows, and this is where it starts trading inside of a range uh, without really knowing what is going to do. The buyers come in, the sellers come in, and it just makes a different range here. So right now, it's sort of respecting this. We'll see what happens. Now, it actually did break this little pivot low. If I were to draw the trend line off of this, let's get this out of the way. Here's your, what just happened? But here's our trend. Here's a pivot low. There's the anchor. Here's the hit. Here's the break of the trend line. Now it's coming back up to retest this trend line. Retest these zones. But now it does show it is showing that it is having some downward pressure. The question is if it's going to hold this trend line now that it broke and see if it comes back to retest to go lower. I'm still in this long. We'll see what happens. Hey, Al, are you in this at any position right now that you have to manage it? Uh, no, it doesn't. Right now, it's on. It's uh, just waiting for it to hit a target. What do you, what do you got in mind? Uh, looking at your Aussie CAD, you want to take a look at that real quick? Aussie CAD. Aussie. Aussie Strong CAD's Week. Cut window. Aussie CAD. Put our charts up. Load. Uh, Uh, so as I analyze this, we have a, now this is for the last several days, it's been ranging between here and here, and it's pretty much right in the middle of this range. So let's take a look at that one. I just went long on it just to. The overall range from this and this is uh, 96 pips, but you do have a trend. So what I'll do is I'm going to draw from this pivot high to where it first hit. This one's still a lower high. I'm going to keep, so right now it's, Respecting this trend line, here's an anchor, here's a near hit, here's a hit. This is the third hit, pulled back, coming back up to retest. We also have the zone from from the low to the pivot high, or pivot low. Here's our wedge. This is the range that's trading right now. At a high, rejected. At a low, rejected. This is our range right now between here and here. So I'm just going to take it from from this pivot high, or to that zone, to this pivot low. And I should probably go this way. On the last hit, and insert shapes. This is a higher time frame. Fib lines. Upper twenty five. Oops, wrong one. Here's the lower 25. It's already touched coming up on the 61%. Make this one orange. Trying to be consistent with my drawings. Six one fifty thirty eight. Mm 
go to my lower time frame chart, see where my zones are. Let's check and see where the fibs are, where the strength meter is on this one, Aussie CAD. We have the Aussie is strong here, strong here, strong here. CAD is weak on all, pretty much three of the four time frames, a little mm -hmm. bit of a pullback going on here. So the CAD is weak, Aussie strong. We can take this to the upside if everything fits. So we have, here's our first target was hit. Second target, right now we have a nice little push up here. This would be between this zone and this zone is only five pips. For me, that's not going to be enough. If we go to the new, the upper 25% zone, if you want to go for that, then you probably could be okay with the pullback, depending on how far it pulls back. I would probably like to see it come back at least to the middle of this zone to look and see. If, if we go to the middle, if it pulls back to the middle of this orange zone to the top here, that's eight pips. That's just about marginal. Um, that would be a real quick scalp on that one. Moving averages are all good on the five minute. Let's see where they are on the 15. We're getting the crossover green, yellow. Moving averages are looking good on this. There's a pullback. Yeah. This one has potential. The biggest question is if, if you have the room on a pullback to be able to hit your targets. This would be a target, and this would be the target. We do have a nice big move down. If it can break through this little pivot over here, then we, if we can get through that 93.38 area, then we can have room to maybe get up here to retest this trend line up in here. It's upper 25%. Again, make it come to you. Here's a rally, here's a rally retrace. Higher high, higher low, higher high. Now it's going to be retesting this area right in here. I want to see it come back and test this area. Because that's where the last left. And that's going to be right at the 76 to... 61%, I believe. Here's my 50%. It's already past the 50%. Here's my 38. Here's my 23. Past the 23, past 38. Got to close below the, the 50. Now we'll see if it can close below the 61. And also that's right where this line is. And here's where the basing was. I would expect this thing to come back and retest this little zone right in here yeah that's where i'm at i'm in a very small position up front but my main position is lower down your strength hercules is still strong across the board so i think this is just a retracement here's a bounce again my moving averages are not in the right order to take it long and this looks like it's a retracement. So we have a trend line. Here's a nice move up, basing, strong move up. Retest this area. Here's our trend line. We're going to draw our trend line from this area right here to here. And we get this would be the anchor. Here's the hit. Here's this looking at a third hit on the trend line. We'll see if it does. It did bounce off of this. Look at the spread on this. What's our spread on this one right now? Eh, about one and a half pip spread. So as you can, let's take a look. Mine's getting and two and a quarter. About one and a half pip spread on this. Right now I'm looking at this as just being a pullback. So have a pretty good spread overall uh, on our 
Hercules. My concern with this is that the Aussie is moving up and down on the hour, Hercules. It's still four, but it cads the zero, so I mean still got a four point spread. I shall like this one to the upside with this as a pullback. With this much movement in the Hercules, it just seems that their uh, pairs are pretty equal as far as volatility. Because yeah. they're just all over the place. The U.S. is back on top in the high time they range. They don't usually flip this much. Right. What's the range to the top? If this pulls back, does it have a to the top? If it retests that, it's only four pips. See, here's the, here's the problem with this one. You only have a six pip range. If it hits the trend line, Bottom trend line, and it goes up to the top and retests that. You only you only have a six pip six pip range. It's hard to get your seven pips out. If you, at best you'd have to get it right on the line, and if right if you try jumping in right now, your fill is going to be right up here where the red line is, and you're now you're looking at only three pips before it breaks. It's going to have to it would have to break that. Once it breaks that, you're only looking at this for the orange. So if we were to get in like right now and you use that, again, you only have seven pips. You barely get your, your seven pip target out of that. It's funny. Your 9337 30, 93, is actually your top third uh, of the um, playground that I set up. You have a blue fib at 93.52. What where do you have on 93.52? Nothing. Okay. Yours doesn't quite go that high. There you go. Well, pretty much 9352 is going to be right here at. That's uh, your blue fib. My, my blue, that's right at my 100% retracement. Mm -hmm. That's right where the bounce was. That's exactly where the bounce was. Exactly right. And then right above that, two pips up, you have a strong supply zone, not been touched. So that's going to be quite a wall to get through. I'm looking to add to my position at about the 9320. How's our, we're looking at the Aussie CAD. How's our US, US uh, see, US Swiss. How's that? That's still hanging in there. Yeah. Take a look it hasn't that changed a lot. Hasn't changed a lot. We have a nice little drop base. See, now with this drop base drop, if we have this facing here, if this, if we look at this drop here, then the target would be right here about the 100%, which is right at the bottom of where this started. If we do a stick or a stick pattern, pull the ray off of that. And we see where the low is here and where the high is here. Then we move this thing over to where this thing peaked out over here at the retracement. The target on this is going to be right down here at the pretty much the retest of this little area. And that's at 91.33. Uh, so then this would be the target, the 100 to 76 area right here. And a lot of times you get a bounce first off the 61, comes back out, but it will hit it. It just it would probably bounce off of this one, right? This spot right in here would probably get a first bounce if this whole area can break. And it has the potential of doing so. The Swiss is strong right now, pretty much across the board. So we're favoring the Swiss right now. Swiss is the stronger of the two, so we're looking at it going short. And you can see that's where we are. We did get stopped out when it was reversed, but now they've, they've flipped. And now we're looking for this as being the target, looking for it to retest this little area down in here. Here's my target. 
I'll probably hang on to this one a little bit longer here to the 61. Here's my target zone right in here. Right now, the moving averages that we have the we've had this yellow moving average has been tested. Uh, well, pretty much just once right now we had here's where the five minute came back up couldn't cross over the yellow yellow is respected. This is our trend line right now. So we're just going to follow this trend all the way down, see if we can get to our target. And with that, we're just about out of time here, folks. That we are. Yeah. I get to head to one of your favorite places, Al. Where's that? Airport. Oh, speaking of that, uh, maybe in the 888 room after this, I have a quick question for you and Eva and Christine. Okay, it has to be quick because I have to go to the airport. <laughs> okay, it'll be real quick. All right. With that, folks, we're going to run this down. Here's our target for this down move on this U.S. Swiss. We're going to come on down, and then we will <laughs> see what we do. And with that, we will see everybody tomorrow. Hopefully, it'll be a little better trading day. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays are our prime days. Mondays yep, those are, are the fun days. position days. So uh, come back and see us tomorrow, and we will see you then. Everybody be safe. Thanks, everybody. Bye. God bless. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you.